بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. And so obesity is a world crisis, and and it's only getting worse. And in children, it's even worse. And in children, it's even worse. So this is something we really need to think about: is you know developing healthy, healthy, healthy diets, and um, and 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 know that this is part of the sunnah and part of the deen, and and teaching that to our families and practice that in our homes. He says in the next hadith, may Allah subhanahu wa taala forgive us. It's truly a challenge. But it's something we need to uh, we need to really be mindful of and work on as a community. It's about health and nutrition and diet for the purpose of our health, but greater than that with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But for our health as well, right? One of the biggest leading to illnesses um, is is obesity you know, and and bad diet. Um, this next hadith is narrated on Abdullah uh, ibn Mahsan al Ansari al al Khatmi radiyallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man asbah minkum amin fi sirbihi mu'afan fi jasadihi andahu kutu yawmihi faka annama hizat lahu dunya bihadhafiriha This hadith is amazing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is narrated by Ubedillah ibn Muhsan the Ansari radiyallahu anhu from the trial al-Khatmi radiyallahu anhu he narrates that the Messenger says, whoever among you wakes up and they are safe and they have health in their body and they are they have food for that day, it is if the whole world has been gathered to them. If you have these three things, you have the entire dunya. That the whole dunya is this. The whole dunya is to be safe, to have food, and to have health. If you have this much, what else can the dunya offer you? Some variety, different dishes, different clothes, you know, little entertainments. But you have the most valuable things in life. And that's why there's a saying, what? Um, the most valuable things in life are free. Right? Allah has given us the most, the greatest treasures of life is what? You're free. You have your health, alhamdulillah. You have the, you have the, you have the whole dunya. If you're safe, you don't have to worry about your life and your well-being safety of your family, your loved ones, your community, and you have food to eat for that day. You don't have to think about where I'm going to get my meal from. You are, you have, you have the whole dunya Allah has given, granted it to you. So this should be the mindset of the believer. You know, our, our, our mindset affects our happiness and our mood. If you wake up and you're happy to have a meal, you won't be sad when you see somebody have something more than you. You say, Alhamdulillah, I have what Allah, I have what I need, Alhamdulillah. I have no hasad for anybody. But if you're always looking, what happens is what is in front of you becomes, you know, little in value. Always looking at who has what shoes and what clothes and what house and who has how many kids and whose wife is this, whose husband is this and all of these different things. You just increase your own depression and your own misery, right? So... Know that what if Allah has given you these things, the Prophet says, yes, yes. you have the whole dunya. Say, Alhamdulillah, go worship Allah. You don't need to worry about the dunya anymore. You have what you need of the dunya to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have a happy life. To reach Allah and also to have a happy life. If you have these things, you have what you need to be happy. The rest of it is inside. The rest of it is inside. It's not outside. It's you have to work on yourself. If you work on yourself, you'll be happy. If you don't, you're going to be miserable. It isn't because you don't have possessions. It's because you are being defeated by your own desires. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify us and purify our hearts. Allahumma ameen. In this next hadith, is narrated by Abdi Karimat al-Maqdad ibn Ma'adi Yakrib radiyallahu anhu. He says, I heard the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, مَا مَلَأَ بِنْ مَا مَلَأَ آدَمِيٌّ وِعَاءً شَرًّا مِنْ بَطْ مِنْ بَطْنٍ بِحَسْبِ بِنِ آدَمٍ أُكُلَاتٌ يُقِمْنَ صُلْبَهُ. The Prophet ﷺ says that the son of Adam does not fill any container more evil and dangerous than his stomach. And this is so interesting that the worst container a person can fill is their is their stomach, meaning fill it to its full. Right, and again, obesity, right, overeating, having a bad diet, is the source of a variety of illnesses. If you talk like the number one leading uh, uh, or leading cause of death in the U.S. is cardiovascular problems, is heart problems, and breathing, 
And that's predominantly affected by what? What you eat and your physical activity. Um, if you talk mentally, your emotions, your mental mood, even like uh, uh, general like mental well-being, like depression, anxiety, um, psychosis, people who sometimes, you know, we say there's jinn or sihar, oftentimes is their, their brain uh, is, 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 is just being, has been traumatized and also doesn't have the treating and coping mechanisms and different things needed to heal from traumatic experiences. And so it leads to a variety of mental problems. And part of that, their diet plays a huge role on how well the brain can handle um, stress and, and, and trauma. Regarding food, another aspect is memory. They say the worse your diet is, and the less physically active you are, um, the quicker you lose your memory. Regarding women's health and the development of infancy, the better her diet and the better her physical activity is an indication of the child's development in the womb. From there, it sets the trajectory of this child's health to come in the future. SubhanAllah, right? So the Prophet is giving us this warning. He said, the worst container you can overfill is the stomach. You overfill it, you, have, you, put, yourself at, you put yourself at risk for a variety of problems. Physically, mentally, and also spiritually in, in, in Iman. And so all of this shows us what the virtue of, of having a, a restricted diet. And then the Prophet said, it is sufficient for the son of Adam to have, a, you know, to have ukulat, just a few bites. By which you're able to, um, uh, like you know, straighten your back. You know, you're not hungry. You're not, cr you know, crunching your stomach right to get food. If you're not doing that, you have enough to be like, Alhamdulillah, I'm able to proceed, grow up like that. And and this is important. We I think for mothers especially and for parents to think about, overfeeding children isn't good for them. When children say I'm full, I'm full. Leave them alone. A lot of times we see, especially in in our. Um, and a lot of our immigrant communities and just kind of, you know, people aren't as well educated about nutrition and diet. We think that, no, 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 the child didn't eat enough. Keep feeding them, keep feeding them. They have to eat more, they have to eat more. Don't. Allah already said the system in the body that knows when it's full. Unless this child has some type of abnormal um, uh, uh, deficiency in their diet, maybe they lack protein or something of that sort, and you have to make sure they get that, don't. If the child says, I'm full, let them be, they're full. Don't make them eat more than that, right? Once you fill your food, don't eat more than that, right? And, and so this is really important because what happens is, subhanAllah, the way you teach a child to eat in their infancy leads to their, or in their childhood, leads to their eating habits the rest of their life. And so it's really important for parents to really, you know, take a, uh, to make kind of an educated practice on how they feed their children and how much they feed them. And this can have a long-term effect on the well-being of the children, their health, and their diet. And we'll conclude with one last hadith for tonight, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, uh, he says, and the Prophet said, فَإِنْ كَانَ لَا If the person has to uh, eat, then, you know, if they want to eat more, maybe they just have a big appetite, then what they should do is, فَثُلُثُهُ لِطَعَانِ So people have different levels. Some people, they eat a few bites, they're, got, they're done. But some people, maybe their appetite is a little bigger. He said, if, that's, if, you, if you have a bigger appetite, then what should you do? Make a third for your food, right? Eat, but don't just eat a bunch. Drink, and then with thulus lishawabe. And then have a third uh, for your drink. So if you're gonna eat, if you have a big appetite, try to drink a lot so you get full fast. So the Prophet has given this advice, right? Have a third of food. If you have a big appetite, drink a lot as well. To at least make a third of it as well for food, but make sure you can always breathe. Never eat to a point where you can't breathe. Leave a third for air. Um, and then the next hadith is narrated on Anas and Radi Allahu Anhu. قال أبو قال 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 أبو طلحة لأمي سليم. أبو طلحة سل لأمي سليم. قال سمعت صوت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ضعيفا أعرف فيه الجوع. He says to her, Abu Talha. I heard the sound of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam very weak from starvation. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's diet would be so restricted and, and, and to the point that you can feel the hunger in his voice. He would be so hungry, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you could feel it in his voice, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. 
Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us with him on judgment day. Allah may amen. And then he would say, Fahal indaki min shay. He said, Do you have anything to give to the Messenger? And do we have some food? She said, Fakalat na'am, fa akrajat akrasan min shayirin, thumma akhathat khimaran laha, falafat al khubza bi ba'dihi, thumma dasat hu tahta thobin thobi, wa radatni bi ba'dihi. She said, yes, I have some food. And so she got some sha'ir, I think it's um, uh, barley uh, loaves. And so she made bread for the Prophet Khubz, and she you know, wrapped it in a garment, and she told him, put it under your garment and go give it to the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. Then she sent me to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam فَذَهَبْتُ فَوَجَدْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم جَالِسًا فِي الْمَسْجِدِ وَمَعْهُ النَّاسِ He said, I went and I saw the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sitting in the masjid and he was in the, and people were gathered with him. And so he said, فَقُمْتُ عَلَيْهِمْ Then I stood to them فَقَالَ لِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم أَرْسَلَكَ فَقَالَ لِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم أَرْسَلَكَ أَبُوْ طَلْحَ uh, and so Anas is narrating the story that they sent him to deliver the, the bread to the, the Messenger of Allah and he's just a young boy. And so uh, the Prophet said, did Abu Talha send you? Anas anhu says, فَقُلْتُ نَعَمْ He said, yes. فَقَالَ أَلَيْ طَعَامٍ He said, is it for food? Right, this is the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and so he, first he could read people's appearances very well, read their emotions and predict their behavior. And second he has wahi. Right. And so the Prophet's awareness of, of unseen things is also part of his miracles. That he would know things that nobody would be able to know except he would not be able to know except through revelation. And so he predicted, he saw Anas' behavior. It could be either from Wahi or it could be that either he he, he could predict Anas' behavior so long. He said, Is it because of food? Anas he said, Fakutu Naam. Fakala Rasulullah. He told the people to get up. He said to the people, get up, and they all left, and I went in front of them uh, until I came to Abu Talha, and I informed them what the Prophet ﷺ said. Um, and so what does it mean? He's, he's telling them to go to the house of Abu Talha. Right? There's food, let's go all eat. The Prophet ﷺ, again, this is another story. We had the story of Abu Huraira and Ahl al-Safa the other night, right? So the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Talha prepared him a small little meal for the Prophet ﷺ. And now the Prophet ﷺ wants to give it to the entire companions, everybody that was with him that day. And this is from the Kalam of the Messenger ﷺ. So from his khuluq, he would always put the well-being of other people before himself. Um, and so he said, فَقَالَ أَبُوْ طَلْحَةَ يَا أُمَّ سُلَيْمِ أَبُوْ طَلْحَةَ said to Umma Sulaim, قَدْ جَاءَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى he said to her, the Prophet ﷺ has come with a bunch of, a group, you know, a large group of people. We don't have enough, we don't have what will we'll feed all of these people. And she said, فَقَالَتْ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَعْلَمُ Allah and His Messenger know best. If this is what the Prophet ﷺ did, خلاص. they know best, Allah and His Messenger. فَانْطَلَقَ أَبُوْ طَلْحَةَ حَتَّى لَقِيَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَأَقْبَلَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَعَهُ حَتَّى دَخَلَ فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ حَلُمِّي مَا عِنْدَكِ يَا أُمَّ سُلَيْمٍ And so the Prophet ﷺ went to Abu Talha and he went with him until he entered the house and he said, Ya Umma Sulaim, give me whatever you have, whatever food you have, just bring it. فَأَتَتْ بِذَلِكَ الْخُبْزِ So she brought that خُبْز, that piece of bread. وعصرت عليه أم سليم حكة فأدامته ثم قال فيه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما شاء الله أن يقول. and so the Prophet ﷺ he he told her um to bring the خبز and then he commanded that um you know the خبز be kind of like broken down um and 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 so she did that and then the Prophet ﷺ after it was broken down and and kind of um uh, mixed kind of returned to its uh you know uh, mixed form. Uh, he saw Salam made a dua on it. He said whatever, some dua that they couldn't tell or it's not mentioned. And then he, he said, إِذَن لِعَشَرَةً He said, give permission for ten people to enter. And then فَأَذِنَ لَهُمْ فَأَكَلُوا حَتَّى شَبِعُوا ثُمَّ خَرَجُوا Those ten people ate until they were full, full and then they left. And then ثُمَّ قَالَ إِذَن لِعَشَرَةً Then he said, give permission for ten people to enter. 
فأذن لهم فأكلوا حتى شبعوا ثم خرجوا ثم قال ثم قال إذن يا عشرة and then another ten people entered and then they ate till they filled فأذن لهم حتى أكل حتى أكل القوم كلهم وشبعوا until everybody ate their fill everybody was full والقوم سبعون رجلا أو ثمانون and the people were about seventy or eighty people so a little piece of bread went from feeding one person to feeding 80, 70 or 80 people. Muttafaqun alayhi. And so, you know, this hadith is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. First, we learn that the Prophet ﷺ again, he is Mubarak. His, his, he is, his entire being is Mubarak. His hand, his hair, his saliva, his body والسلام, is Mubarak. And we see how Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they used to seek the blessings from the body and the clothing and the being of the Prophet He's also Mubarak for this Ummah. Because of him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the honor of being the greatest nation and has given us the greatest book. And by him, we saw Allah we, and we will be the first nation to enter Jannah. And we will be, he will be the, the first Allah the one to intercede. He will be given the greatest intercession on the day of judgment. He Allah has earned this Ummah forgiveness in abundancy. 70,000 with them, every one of them, 70,000 will enter Jannah without hisab or adab. The Prophet ﷺ, um, has, because of him, we have the greatest day of the week as Friday, Jumu'ah. The Prophet ﷺ, he is Mubarak. He is the best of Allah's creation. And we are, uh, the blessing, our, one of our scholars, I remember, he said, there are five great blessings of life. Islam, Iman, you know, the few things. And, the, and then he says, the, of the five greatest blessings that a person is granted is to be a, mens, a member of the Ummah of Rasulullah. <laughs> to be given that status, we have to understand that you have the greatest, one of the greatest blessings in existence. That people for generations before wished they could have this blessing. Anbiya wished they could be followers of Rasulullah. <laughs> And Allah has granted that to each and one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins and make us true followers of the Messenger. Second, we see their simplicity. They're sitting in the masjid, they're starving. But they don't let that starvation distract them from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Us, we have plenty to eat. But you know what they say? Ease is hardship. There's, there's, a, there's a saying, right? Ease is hardship. When things are too easy, you eat too much. You, it causes a lot of problems for you. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting phrase, right? Ease is hardship. And so eating, having too much food and too much is actually counterproductive. You're going to get, you're going to have health problems, life problems, a lot of different problems. So don't, don't let your life become too comfortable. Always make sure there's some challenge, there's some diet, there's some restriction. Always challenge yourself to move to another, you know, another level up because that's how you will grow and that's how you will flourish in life. But if you always eat and indulge your pleasures, then you're going to have a lot of hardship in life. Um, and so we see also the miracle of the Prophet We see their simplicity. And so that's a lesson for us to really have a simple, simple life, have a restricted diet, and to really raise our homes in that manner. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us uh, simplicity in our lives, to grant us contentment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. We ask Allah to forgive our sins. We ask Allah to forgive our sins. We ask Allah to give us good health. We ask Allah to bless for us our health, to bless for us our families and our homes. We ask Allah to guide us and our spouses and our children. We ask Allah to forgive us and forgive us and our parents and our and all of the Muslimin, those who are alive and those who have left past. Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa